Every week, so much happens in your own country that it's often hard to keep track of the news at home, let alone what's going on around the world. So the Global Summary is our weekly rundown of the week's biggest news events. In the next eight minutes, I'm going to walk you through some of the biggest news. But we'll be moving fast. So if you want to find out more about any of the stories, then there'll be article recommendations in the description. This week's biggest news stories include the Russian opposition leader's deteriorating health in prison, COVID spending habits, and the incredibly controversial new football league. Before we start though, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring the bell to be notified every time we put out a new global news video. Thank you so much for your support. We've spoken a lot about Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny in the past. Initially rising to prominence after running directly against the country's longtime president, Vladimir Putin, Navalny garnered international attention when he was poisoned last year, with most blaming the Russian government. The poisoning forced Navalny into Germany in order to seek treatment, something which violated his parole terms. As such, when he returned to Russia, he was arrested and imprisoned, a move which he claimed was unjust and politically motivated. Anyway, since his arrest, there have been a number of concerns about Navalny's health, with some claiming that he is in a worrying state, before such suspicions were immediately downplayed by Russian authorities. Navalny clearly thought that these concerns were genuine though, with him going on hunger strike for 20 days to protest the lack of medical attention he was receiving. Since then though, the FSIN prison service has remarked that he's receiving daily doctor visits and that he's now taking vitamins. However, that still doesn't mean that he's in a stable condition, with supporters claiming that his life is hanging by a thread due to heightened creatine levels that could cause kidney failure and potentially fatal potassium levels, which could lead to a cardiac arrest. Russia certainly has some incentive to keep him safe though, with the US remarking that there would be serious consequences if he was allowed to die in prison. In addition, the UK, France, Germany and the EU have all expressed concerns over Navalny's treatment. Continuing on the theme of Russia, recent days and weeks has seen the country step up pressure on their border with Ukraine, significantly increasing their military presence. We discussed this in our recent TLDR EU video last week, that's linked down below. But to summarise the situation, a number of independent sources have recently begun to report that Russia has been moving tanks, troops and ballistic missiles to its border with Ukraine, something that was later confirmed by Russia as an internal affair. The positioning of Russia's military presence doesn't necessarily point to it mounting an offensive. If anything, it could be a sign that Russia isn't planning to invade Ukraine anytime soon. When they annexed Crimea, the Kremlin was hesitant to claim any responsibility whatsoever, going as far as distancing themselves as much as possible. It was only months, if not years later, that Russia finally admitted that it played a key part, and that the little green men that snuck in were in fact Russian. Nonetheless, the sheer size and scale of the movement has caused many to worry, and call on Russia to de-escalate immediately. From NATO and the G7 to the Ukrainian Prime Minister and Joe Biden, all have called on Russia to immediately cease what it's doing. And it's that final person, President Biden, that many believe the whole exercise is targeted at. With the new administration in the White House, President Putin will invariably want to show Biden that he's not up for playing games, and that Russia has the military might to do what it wants. The other groups targeted by this exercise are the domestic population. According to official data, Putin's approval rating has been falling and falling fast. Having had approval ratings in the 80s, recently that's fallen to about 60%. And for a strong man like Putin, that fall will hurt. The movement of military equipment and personnel can invariably be seen as him taunting the West and showing his own people that Russia can put up a fight if needs be. What will happen in the next few days and weeks though? Well, that's anyone's guess. No matter where you are in the world, COVID has likely rather limited your access to shops, restaurants and holidays for the last year, 
which means that many people didn't spend as much in 2020 as they might have done in previous years. As such, some economists are predicting a major spending boost in the months and years to come, as pent-up demand can finally be unleashed. This reduced spending and increased saving isn't insignificant either, with a huge $5.4 trillion in additional savings in 2021 when compared to 2020. Coupled with this, studies show that consumer confidence has reached the highest level since 2005, showing a keenness to spend as soon as unlocking commences. In fact, Moody's chief economist remarked that the combination of unleashing the significant pent-up demand and overflowing excess savings will drive a surge in consumer spending across the globe as countries approach herd immunity and begin to open up. With most developed economies showing a significant uptick in savings, we'll have to wait and see whether people actually return to shopping quickly and splurge this pent-up capital. While it seems that a lot of people have a lot of leftover capital, one state is struggling more than ever, the Vatican. With COVID hitting visitors and donations hard, the pandemic hasn't been kind to the Vatican, who have been forced into tough austerity-style cuts. These cuts are hitting especially close to home, with the Pope announcing 10% pay cuts for cardinals, apparently due to the health emergency adversely affecting all sources of revenue for the Holy See. The country's small size also means the vast majority of standard financial measures aren't possible, as unlike other standard states, only a small percentage of revenue actually comes from taxes. Also, despite issuing their own euros and holding it as an official currency, the state has no real power over it, as neither a member of the EU or the Eurozone. The Vatican plans to plug financial gaps by using reserve savings, but falling tourism has clearly hit the state, which relies heavily on the sector. Another country struggling to cope with the implications of Covid is Shanghai. This Asian hub acts as a major conduit for travel and business in a non-Covid world. But with travel all but shut down and business restricted, the city has struggled to power on. However, its newly opened Connect at Shanghai hub aims to change all of that. Marketed as the world's first quarantine-free travel bubble for business travellers. The hub allows international visitors to hold meetings with locals, even if said meetings are conducted through a glass partition. This hotel-come-meeting space was pioneered by Singapore's government and offers business people the opportunity to meet face-to-face -face in an increasingly digital world. Doing so comes at a cost, though, with stays at the 150-room hermetically sealed hotel setting you back at least $384 per night. Whether people will be willing to pay that much in order to meet people in person again, at least kind of, is yet to be seen. But it seems like a lot of money to meet someone through a different kind of glass screen. For our final story, let's move back to Europe. Late Sunday night, rumours began to circulate about a new breakaway football league, led by 12 of Europe's biggest clubs. Monday morning rolled around and the official announcement was made. Why are they forming this new league? Well, some of the top teams from the continent claim that they're disappointed with some aspects of the Champions League, the current cross-continental competition, and thus are taking matters into their own hands. One of the stated aims is to gain more money and redistribute it lower down on the footballing pyramid. Despite that, the backlash has been immense, with fans, players, although at the time of writing none of them from the involved teams, and politicians all jumping in and chastising the clubs for their actions, labelling it as a greedy pursuit that will ruin the sport. Additionally, FIFA and UEFA, the world and European footballing authorities, have threatened serious sanctions on clubs and their players if this goes ahead. Whether this will actually happen, or whether it's just the bargaining chip, remains to be seen. But regardless, this is probably the biggest thing to happen off the footballing pitch in decades. So those are some of the biggest global news stories from the last week. And if 8 minutes wasn't enough for you, then there's links to further reading in the description. If you think we missed anything, then comment below the stories you'd like to see us cover in future episodes. If you want to get more videos like this one, as well as more serious topics, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. 
Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.